Good afternoon, this is Jason Robinson with RJG. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's been a, been a while, I think. Um, today we're gonna talk about doing in the press cleanings of your injection molds. So if we've worked on the four any length of time, we've probably been told um, to walk, to clean our molds, our injection molds in the, while they're in the machine. Um, instead of taking them out and do a full PM on the bench, sometimes we have to clean them in the machine. So we're gonna discuss that today, hopefully help provides a little bit of information about this. So why do we clean our injection molds? Well, someone might ask if they're in the machine, um, up off the floor, how do they get dirty? Um, there, there's lots of ways they can get dirty. So if we think back to some of our um, essentials classes or fundamentals classes, or even master molder, if, if you've taken those, or maybe you studied this in college, um, we know that uh, material, plastic resin is made primarily from petroleum oil and natural gas. And lastly, a little bit of agriculture. Um, and if you think about petroleum oil, it's pretty nasty stuff. So they derive the plastic that you run from there. So it's not crude oil anymore, but it has some of the byproducts still in there. On top of that, it has additives that can be colorant, that can be UV stabilizer, flame retardant, um, a million different things. So as we heat those, those additives and those plastic resins up to operating temperature with the injection molding barrel, and we shoot them into the bowl to form the part we're making, off-gassing can happen. So even if we're running our materials at the correct conditions, we off-gas. So some of those volatile compounds um, from the additives or resin can go into the molding, into the mold itself. Um, if we're running our material out of the proper parameters, like for example, running it too hot to make it flow better, which is not something I'm saying you should do, that will off-gas even further. Um, it'll provide deposits in your molds. Some of the other ways that our molds get dirty would be from humidity in the air or maybe a, a water leak in an extreme case, so moisture. Moisture can cause rust and it can cause spots on the cavity surface, especially if it's a show surface. Some other things would be fingerprints. So if you're running a highly polished mold, even your thumbprint can cause a, 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 a sh it can show up on the part the acids from your fingers can cause rust and pitting in some cases if it's left on there for a length of time. Sometimes just contamination out of the air like dust or um, some, some particles that were flying around um, kicked up by a fan or someone cleaning out a piece of equipment, something that could land in the mold. So there's lots of ways that our mold can get dirty. Oh, the other reason would be grease. So sometimes um, when we put too much grease on the wrong place, it can go from where it's supposed to be to where it's not supposed to be. So we have to clean those off the cavities um, and the cores and everything else. So why we clean them all? See so yeah, how they're a little bit dirty. Um, usually it's not, hopefully not dirty enough that we can see, you know, just walking by. Sometimes it is. Um, so why do we clean it? So there's many reasons. So let's talk about the one that's probably at the top of my list. Um, every mold or every mold should have little uh, channels machined across the parting line to let the air escape. We call those vents. Those vents are in depths of thousandths of an inch, so they're not very, very deep because they let the air escape, but not the plastic. So if we get some dirt buildup or we get some off-gassing um, that collect in those vents, they close up really easy. So one of the first things, primary reasons we like to clean molds is to get the the nasty stuff out of the vents. So the, the vents are used to get the nasty stuff out of the cavity, out of the mold, get the gases out of the mold so they don't ignite under the pressure of filling, packing the mold. Well, that dirty, nasty stuff along with the air can get caught just off the part on the parting line in the vent area. So once that happens, they're no longer a vent. So Maybe you have a part that's burning, you have a defect, a, a burn is a very common defect. You clean the mold, clean the vents, and the burn is gone. Didn't even change the process. Um, some other reasons, if we have water buildup or a little bit of rust or bad fingerprints, if it's a really delicate mold, the, the, those little things can show us the imperfections on the part. Um, if we have a nicely textured surface or a mirror finish on a part, any little thing on the cavity or core can show up on the molded part after it's, after it's out, and those are defects are no good. So just simply cleaning the mold can help alleviate that. Um, another reason, it's probably a very, very small reason, but cooling. So if, even if you can't see it, 
the small little layer of whatever we've been discussing is on the cavity or on the core that is a barrier between the plastic and the steel so it interferes with the material and mold interface so it lowers the heat transfer from the molded part to the steel of the mold small but something to consider um, another reason we clean is um, our mold, every mold at least has leader pins in it. Some molds have way more than that. We might have slides, cams, a lot of moving action, actions, and those things require lubrication. So we, we lubricate those with um, some type of grease, and over time that grease can wear out, it gets dirty and nasty, and it's not as effective anymore. And that just leads to damage of the mold. So after you clean the mold, you would wipe all the old grease off and apply a, a an adequate layer of new grease and put it where it's supposed to be. Um, and how do we clean it? Well, you know, in most cases, it's as simple as some mold cleaner and, and a rag. It's that's that simple. Now it can be very particular to how you clean it based off the type of mold you have, the type of material that the mold's made of. I'll give you one or two examples. If you have a highly polished mirror finished part, um, so that would be reflected in the surface of the tool. Certain cleaners might need to be used. Certain um, cloths might need to be used. Like this might be too rough for a mirror finish. Um, so it, always consult your tool room or your, your manager, whoever's in charge of that, and make sure you're cleaning it with the right supplies. In most cases, it's a rag with some simple mold cleaner. There's many options a mold cleaner you can get. On top of that, we would usually, if it, if it is a mold that has, uh, is sensitive to fingerprints or actually any mold, the acids on our fingers can leave um, acids on the steel and can cause damage over time. So this will be like a neutralizer. So if you have a mold that's like that, this is never ever a bad idea. Um, this is step one of a step two process. I don't have the other can. Um, and lastly, if the mold's going to be cleaned and then put up maybe at the end of the production run, um, maybe it's going to stay in the machine. Maybe it's going to be pulled out and put on the rack. Either way, um, there's moisture in the air, probably anywhere you go. So that moisture can collect on the mold and cause slow um, rust can happen. So a rust preventative mold guard. Again, there's many names for this. So on this stuff, go light. You don't need a lot of it. Just put a little bit on there, wipe it, wipe it, the excess off and close the mold up, leave it in there. Again, consult with the procedures that your tool room or your manager of your department has set forth. Um, we're just going to give you some good advice and stress the importance of it. In a minute, I'm going to demonstrate how to clean this simple mold right here, how to, how to clean it off, how to wipe it down, apply some grease and maybe some rust preventative. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate cleaning this a little bit. So got my mold cleaner here give it a little shake again we're not spraying a lot on there just enough to clean the dirt off i'm going to clean the vents so i'm going to give it a good wipe okay uh, a little bit on the other side all right so there's not a lot to this mold to clean so it's pretty quick i'm going to wipe off all the old grease while you're at it, this is a perfect time to replace the grease, even if it doesn't look bad. So I'm gonna get my lubricant here. This is synthetic grease. And you notice I'm wearing my safety glasses because it's real easy to spray these cans the wrong way. I know it sounds funny, but put, just put a little bit of grease on the leader pins and uh, we don't wanna spray cleaner in our eyes. I, unfortunately, I know how bad that can be. A little bit in the holes over here if you can not absolutely necessary uh, but I like to do that so there's the grease um, if I'm using the the fingerprint neutralizer the acid neutralizer this would be a good time to do that and then we got the the rest preventative or the in this case what it's called is mold guard so this would be what I'm gonna do if the mold is gonna be stored in the machine closed or on a rack somewhere. If we're gonna start the mold right back up, I wouldn't be doing this step right now. So shake it up and just a light coat is, this is, all, is all you need. So a little bit on that side, a little bit on that side, okay? Um, some other things is when, when you are cleaning the mold here to, to keep in mind. 
If there are moving components, like a slide, for example, you're gonna be very, very careful that as you're cleaning and wiping, that if the slide is moved, that it's put back in the proper place. That's a whole separate training, training topic, but just know that if you move anything and you move it out of its correct place and then you close the mold, you're, you're probably gonna damage the mold in some way or another. So take great care with that. Um, always dry moisture off your mold. If you have water leaks, even a little water drip from one of your hoses or fittings, make sure you clean that up after you fix the leak. Thank you very much. And I ho hope this is a learning opportunity. And um, if you have comments, please put them in the comment section below. Like our channel, subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or further comments, feel, feel free to put them down in the comments. We, we do our best to answer them all. Thank you very much and have a good week.